hello and welcome to my channel please like share and subscribe if you like this video and thank you all so much for watching thank you thank you thank you to my day ones twos and threes thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in that means well thank you so very much i appreciate you all and welcome 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 this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only so everything is alleged so it's not in the fair act use it's in my description box y'all so let's get to it y'all uh really really quick um i want to play this little clip i haven't heard the whole clip i'm gonna let y'all know that i just uh, ran into this on star page um one life family page okay y'all and um he has a recording of shane quila robinson mother and sister um a little bit a little bit so i haven't listened to it yet i'm gonna listen to it with you all and then we'll talk about it okay y'all so let me push play roller coaster because now we, we back to to the beginning to how we was feeling five months ago when we first heard about them so it's it's um we think it's a it's a sad situation um and i and i and i solely stand on that those people in that room that was on my on that trip with my sister caused her death even though it's some discrepancies between the two um examiners the autopsies their reports both reports, she died a horrific, a horrific death. Here in the state, she had blunt force trauma. We all know this to the head, and she suffocated. Wait a minute, y'all. So she said, you know, both transcripts is saying that um, she had blunt force trauma to the head, and um, now they saying she suffocated. Now, this is the first time I heard this. I don't know if anybody else have heard this, but she suffocated, y'all. Wait a minute, y'all. <sighs> Every time they say something, they bring out a little something else. But see, they're not bringing out anything until now after the, the FBI closed the case and said that, you know, she was not, um, she didn't pass away from no uh, broken neck and all that stuff. Um, now they're bringing out other stuff. Now, if you, they already knew that, you know, th this in the first place, like I told y'all, why didn't they mention this? They wanted people to continue to think that um, she had passed away from a broken neck and stuff. They wanted people to think this because the family had got this information months ago and they didn't release it and let people know. So why did they want people to continue to think that? I have no idea. Now they're saying that she suffocated. Now, for them to say she suffocated, was she choked? Was she choked or did they put a pillow over her head or something, y'all? Because now, you know, you're taking this into a whole nother um, area now, okay? And if she suffocated, I don't think she did it to herself. She, she couldn't have did that. You know, you know, they could have said she failed. I you know I said this at first when this case first started. I said they could say she failed or anything. Okay. Um now it's coming out that in the autopsy report that she suffocated. Y'all come on now. How many times is they gonna, you know, keep this you know, taking you from one step to a stage to another. As many interviews as the family has had, you would think that that would have came out by now, y'all. Why is it coming out now? After the FBI closed the case and, like, poof, be gone out my face because y'all getting on my nerves. We can't do our job, okay? Um, Now they're saying she was suffocated. Let's keep going, y'all. She had trauma in, um, on the report from Mexico as well. So we are at disbelief. And I think the world is at disbelief. How can no charges be, be brought when we see and witness some form of uh, violent, a violent attack towards her? Everybody's seen that video. And then they come back and here we is, they, they brought us in a room, it's about 10 or 12 FBI agencies that all had a part in the investigation. And the only thing they can tell us that her death is undetermined. So we don't, we, we baffled actually and we're upset 
and we we exhaust it it should no family should have to go through what we go through what we have been through and then it being public that makes it even worse wait a minute y'all so she said that by the story being public it makes everything worse i doubt i i, I doubt that i think that Shanquila Robinson's case being public has helped them in so many ways. But now she's saying that, you know, this makes it worse. If it wasn't for it being public, you wouldn't even get to where y'all got to now. Um, you wouldn't even have the donations that you have if it wasn't public. Um, the first place, they no reason that it went public. They wanted this to go public. Okay, y'all. Now they saying that, you know, this makes it worse because it's public. Um, I don't think so. You've been getting a lot of help from people that are really trying to help you. You've been getting the help from, you know, not to mention people's pockets, but I've been getting help from a lot of people, the, the ones that do really care about her getting justice. You know, bloggers and stuff like that. There's so many out here that's some fake ones that um just in it for, you know, their pockets. But it's a lot of people out here that was that, and they still are concerned about Shanquilu. But it's not much you can do. If it, and see, this is what's the whole thing, y'all. It's so important that grown folks stop um, running these streets. And when I say running the streets, you know, it's bad enough in the U.S. that anything can happen. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, y'all, and. We, we as a people, we got to learn, you know, some places we don't need to be, okay? Um, going to Mexico is not a good idea in the first place, y'all. It really isn't. And Shanquila was running around her foot and fancy free as if, the, you know, she had the rail in her park, back pocket. And if it wouldn't have been this, the way she traveled all over the place and hanging out with the wrong crowd and stuff like that, it would have been happened somewhere else, y'all. To be honest, she had a lot of haters. She traveled with her haters um, out the country. And, you know, can we can we just, you know, be honest about this whole situation, too? She didn't deserve it. But at the same time, you know, people has to be held accountable for themselves, too. OK, it's people right now that after Shanquila passed away in, New, in, in um, Mexico, it's people right now. That's still booking tickets, y'all, going to Mexico. And you have to ask yourself, what is wrong with people right now? Seriously, y'all. Is it that serious? We have beautiful places in the U.S. that you can travel to. And um, you don't have to just go to all of these places. I know they got some beautiful places that they have. But at the same time, is it worth your life right now? It's so much going on. And it's not just on a regular day basis stuff. But it's politically it's a lot going on right now with the politicians and all kind of stuff and um it's just not healthy it's just not a good idea to do right now it really isn't um i don't know every time i look it's hard to look at her mother and i'm not trying to talk about her mama y'all because i know people be like you would be tripping um her mama looks so mean y'all i don't know her mama looks so mean it's just the look on her face is like the type of mama you would be scared to go ask her, can I go to the party? You know, like she gonna just blow up on you. She just looks so mean, y'all, all the time. And her face have not changed since the beginning of this whole thing happening till now. She just looks evil. I, Y'all, I'm just saying, she look mean. And the sister, you know, we... Oh, that's the end of the video. Family should have to go through what we go through. Look how the mama looks so mean, y'all. And being public... That makes it even worse. I don't know, y'all. I don't know about this situation with her and her mom and Mama Bear and all this mess. Let me go back for a second, y'all. Because I think Star had um, put up a video. Let me see. Can I find it? Of the father. I, this is what I didn't hear either. Yo, yo, I want one to. life family. What's up, one life family? Okay, let me get to his, the father interview. Because I didn't see this either, but I saw it, you know, I saw it pop up on my uh, feed. But I never clicked on it. So, let me click on this now and see what's going on with the, the father. Because he haven't been 
saying anything lately. He haven't been saying nothing lately. He, he haven't been at the rallies. He wasn't at, you know, um, the, the conference when they told him the information. I didn't see him. So let's see what he has to say now. Yeah, Mr. Bernard. Okay, let's go. It's just sort of a little emotion standing here talking about this. It's on back order. But uh, a marker came. So I brought you all out here today to let y'all know that, you know, um, her mark is down now, you know. Um, I can come, me and my mother, my family, I can come up here and talk to her. I know where she is. Because at first, I didn't know where, I, I didn't even know she was over there. Um, I talked to her that Wednesday before she passed, transitioned over. I'm recording. I get a phone call from my mother saying that she transitioned over in Mexico. Um, then I get a phone call, the only thing I know, she talked to Cleo Cook, supposed to be her best friend, two times on the phone. I ain't know nothing about that. You know, I just felt as a father that um, the way I love her, the way I raise her, that I should have had an opportunity to give her that father advice or my opinion about going over there. And which I did. And and I Okay, so he you know, we knew this at first. He said that um he didn't even know that she was going over there. We knew this from the beginning, you know. And this is the part that, you know, the problem that I had with him is because, you know, um he claimed that they were so close, like two peas in a pot. But at the same time, um he didn't know anything about the trip. So at least he's being honest about that now that he, if he had known that she was going over there out the country, that he might have had some insight on telling her maybe not to go. You know, especially for Halloween weekend, y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is when they do sacrifices and all kind of little crazy mess, okay? So he's saying that he didn't even have a chance to try to talk her out of it. Which I doubt he could have did because she, you know, uh, she seemed like the type of person that, you know, would have went anyway. And maybe, you know, maybe now, due to the fact he's saying this, th there's a possibility, y'all, that this is why she didn't tell him. Because he probably was going to be like, you shouldn't go over there or whatever, whatever, whatever. And maybe that's why she didn't tell him. Okay? Maybe he's the one with the level head that would have been like, you know, don't go over there. But when you're looking at them doing an interview and you, you're doing a Masonic, your first interview is with checkboard floors and a duality. It's still his bracelet with the bell. Um, how did he explain all of that? You know what I'm saying, y'all? It just seems like some no smoke and mirrors to me. But let's keep going. I know for a fact, from the bottom of my heart, we all might not even be standing out here if I had that opportunity to speak to her, even though she's 25 years old. Um, she grown, but still at the same time, I'm her protector until she get a husband. When she get a husband, then he become her protector. But as this father standing right here, I feel like I should have been her protector, and I was denied that. What would you have said? I would have asked her who she going with. How well do you know these folks? Then I would have came back and said, well, who, who their parents are? Well, before you go, let me meet these parents. Let me meet these folks. You know, i always been I always been like that ever since she started beginning to having a lot of friends, you know, as a father, you know. Not trying to be in her business is just the point of uh, making sure she okay and the folks that are around her, who she keeping company with. Because everybody can say you your friend, but they're really not. It all depends on what you got and how you carry yourself. And she carried herself very well, because that's how I taught her, you know. The respect, morals. You're, no, I never met her. Didn't know nothing about her. You know, only thing I know, her mother said they went to school with her, and she's going to tell them, you know, told me, well, you don't know them. So I said, do you know them? She said, I know of them, but I'm seeing in the interview, you know, um, 
you told your lawyer, Sue Robinson, that you just know one of them. That was Khalil Cook. So that tells me right there, we both was in the blind as a mother and a father. See y'all? So he's even admitting that, you know, the mother didn't even know the other people that was going on this trip with her child. And, um, I just tell y'all, that, that, that poker face on the mama is, that poker face off the chain, y'all. It has not changed in no way, shape, or form. I haven't seen no emotion from her. I haven't seen nothing but a, just a mean look about this woman. And um, he's saying right now that even the mother, he heard in the interview. So it's a disconnect with the mom and daddy as well. Because he's saying that it, she told him that she knew of them and this and that. But then when she did the interview, she said something else. So is it safe to say he's saying that she's telling two different stories? She tell him one thing and then she gets on the interview and she says something else. Y'all. Yeah. See, this is what I've been telling y'all about the lies back and forth that don't make no sense. She tells uh, the news people that she didn't know these people at all. She didn't know them at all. The only person she knew was Khalid. And, of course, he went on trips with them, with the family and stuff like that. That's all she knew. She didn't even know of the other people. And as a mother, I know this. she was a grown woman. I still know that. But, um, y'all... The mama should have had a nice little talk with her daughter. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Um, it just seemed like there was a disconnect with the family and her. Like there was no closeness, okay? I am up in age, and my mama still tell me stuff. You know, be careful going here and there, there and there. You know, do this this way and that way, that way. My mom tells me this at this age, and it's up to me if I'm going to listen or not. And I just don't feel that Shanquila had that type of relationship with her family. For them to sit down and talk to her and, you know, try to tell her something for her own good. It just don't seem like she had that kind of connect. And it's a possibility that this is why they kept it away from the father that she was going. Because he probably would have tried to, you know, talk her out of going. I don't know. But it just seems like a serious disconnect. And, um... Man, this is a sad thing. It's, it's sad at the same time. But let's keep going, y'all. We both in the blind. We both didn't even know these folks. You know. So. He's saying they both didn't know. Can we start last week or about more than a week ago? I'm sure you got the, if heard the information, got the information that there would be no prosecution by the United States Attorney. Well, yeah, but the case is the case is still open though. Um, so God is still moving. My faith is so strong in the mustard seed that um he will prevail. You know. What does that look like to you? Patient. Like I always been. Just like y'all standing out here, I was patient while y'all set up and everything. I always been patient. But I mean, what does that look like as far as you said you're still hopeful for what? Justice will be served. Justice will be served. It's going to be served. It's going to be served. And so what does that justice look like? This justice is going to look like they're going to get what they deserve to get to them. You just don't take a life. They brutally beat her. She didn't agree to fight whatsoever. She didn't agree. That's, that's, that's not her. You know. And see, I'm going to tell y'all something else. Um... Something that's very important about this case is that whole fight, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all this. The Cabo 6 said something that was very important, y'all. And if they got proof that this is something that they do, um, it's something that they do. And, and this is why it's so important for you to know your um, loved ones, you know, as a mother and the father, they should have known something about these people. Okay, um, the fact that Cabo Six said that this is something that they do as a group, that when they have a difference, you know, differences between each other, that um, they fight it out and can't nobody jump in. They let them just duke it out. And then afterwards, they make up. 
Um, when she said that, that was a key thing, you know, because some people do do this. Well, different street associations do this. When you join a street association and there's like a little beef in between, in, you know, amongst, you know, you all can agree to, you know, they call it a um, violation. Okay, y'all. But um, what's the difference in a street association violation? And you going out with your friends and y'all got a little difference and y'all duke it out and then going about y'all business and everything get back to normal. Um, if this is something that they've done before, and I'm going to tell y'all this, I wouldn't, it would not surprise me that they didn't record other fights that they had with each other so that they can prove to you know the police and stuff like that that this is something that we do we are friends if we have a disagreement we put paws on each other and then we make up and we go about our business this is just something that we do but we didn't hurt her we didn't do this we didn't do that and when i say stuff like this you know people come to my page and be like you're defending the cabo six i'm not defending nobody okay um cabo six gonna get what's coming to them either the judicial system gonna get them or their karma is definitely going to come back and get them. Nobody is never going to forget their faces right now. Okay? Cabo 6 um, is going to be walking on eggshells for the rest of their lives. Okay? They're going to have to be very careful. And they're, these are people that like to travel and hang out. And they love the outside. Okay? This story has went nationwide. It's all over the place. So even when they go on vacations, traveling, whatever, they are always going to have to look, watch their backs, y'all, okay? And it's always going to be somebody out here that, okay, the judge them doesn't get the revenge, but I'll get it. Or they might even get, you know, give a location to where they are. Anytime they go to a hotel, wherever they go from this point on, they got a target on their back right now, y'all. They might not think so, but they do. They do. And a lot of people don't know Shanquila. They don't know nothing like that. But everybody has seen that, that that video. Everybody have seen, you know, the nonchalant of everybody that act like it ain't no big deal. So what? We went on vacation. We came back without a whatever, whatever, whatever happened, it happened. That's the attitude that everybody has. And, you know, it amazes me that the sister and the mother is so upset right now. But you had already received info about the crew before they even came back from Mexico. They had seen the video footage of them putting paws on her, everything that, well, there was a rumor, you know, going around that they had jumped on her before they even came back. The mama and them knew this. So why was you inviting them to your house and you was acting as if so nonchalant, you know? And now the father is saying that the mama is got, is lying. You know, um, y'all, I keep telling y'all, it's, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on with this case. Okay? Even the father is saying that the mama is lying, basically. Okay, y'all? This man, um, this is a possibility to why they're not close, him and the wife. I mean, well, baby mama. Not close at all. And I think now that it's starting to hit him that, you know, this was a money grab thing. Mom and them wanted some attention and they wanted some money. And they got it. And now they talk, sitting back doing interviews talking about they got to start all over from square one. Um, Start all over to what? If you have no witnesses that's going to verify anything and change any information that's on any paperwork or this and that and this... It's nothing you can do. And, and less than one of the, and I said this before, if Cabo 6 them don't get into it and start telling on each other, you're not going to find out anything. This is one of them situations that y'all see in the movies where you got to um, take somebody and, you know, force them to give you some information, you know, against their will and got to take them in, and then you got them in your presence and you going to tell me what happened to her right now situation. If, if it ain't going to be one of them type of things that it, they're not going to get the information that they're looking for. They're not. It's all, everything is so messed up and tied up with all these different stories. 
and now the discrepancies with um the, the the father is even seeing that the mama is changing up her what she's saying to him she's saying different when she get on the interviews so this screams volumes y'all okay it's so much um disconnect and i keep telling y'all i don't see how not in my world or anybody that i know world um would <laughs> somebody's child go out of town with somebody and then they come back and hang out with the mother for four days straight ain't no way y'all ain't no way okay i would be locked up right now because I would have had him tied up, so, and, and they would have, they would have, I would have got the information out of him on what happened to my child. Definitely, I would have got that out of him. There's no way he would have came to my house four days straight and lied to me in my face. Ain't no way. Seriously, he would have given up that information. Ain't no way I would have sit there. And tell him, oh, tell the girls to come over. And the girls come over. And he, 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 what she gonna wear? What color she gonna wear? Oh, she loved pink. She loved this. She loved that. We should do this color. We should. You're sitting here discussing what the, the what she's gonna wear with the, with the, with the killers. Something don't seem right. And it, as this story unfolds, you know, each day. You, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit this and that net is easing out. And it's still showing you that there's a disconnect in the family that um, they wasn't that close to Shanquila. Um, people are lying. And if the mother will lie to the father and tell the father one thing and then go turn on the news people something else. I told y'all this before. I said it seems like the, the family is sabotaging the, their own case. Every time the mo somebody bring up something, she would debunk it. Every time somebody say something else, the daddy would debunk it. And I was like, the stuff that they are debunking doesn't make sense. It does not make sense, the stuff that they are debunking. So why do they keep contradicting everything somebody say or do? They, turn, they flip it around and then have you confused. Like, is she really trying to get justice for her daughter or not? For her to say the things that she say. Now they say that she was suffocated, y'all. Suffocated can mean two things, right, y'all? Y'all let me know, because I'm not no doctor or nurse. But don't that mean somebody either try to choke you? Or somebody put a pillow over your face? So did later on, you know, um, when they came back, did they take the... I mean, tell me what happened, y'all, because something don't seem right. Something for her to if she was choked or or something like that, then it don't make sense about what the doctors them put down on the paperwork and the people that the first responder saying that she was went into some kind of um convulsion or something like that. Um, that don't make sense. See, this is what I'm saying that they have you so confused about stuff that don't make no sense, which makes you wonder now. Um, was any of that paperwork real from Mexico, y'all? Was any of it real? Was any of the information that they said that she went into convulsions and stuff while they was there? And she was like foaming or something at the mouth. Um, how could that happen if you had been suffocated? See, something just don't seem right, y'all. It seems like it's a lot of lies mixed up in this whole situation. A lot of lies. But let's finish listening to what he got to say. Because right now, it's looking like he's calling the mama a liar. She did not agree to fight. You know, she was going over there to enjoy somebody's uh, birthday one day she graduated with. That's what she thought she was going to do. And then enjoy it, take photos, you know, put them on her phone come back and enjoy it and, you know, talk about it to our other friends, you know. Then the main thing, you know, she got the little kids, the little girls and boys that she plait hair, braid their hair. Now they wonder where Shanquilla is. Because Shanquilla didn't got adapted to her customers, her clients, you know, the mothers, the fathers, how well 
she doing their daughters and son braiding their hair, and they proud of St. Cola doing their hair and how they, you know, she got them looking, you know, stealing something in them that they can become this, they can become that. They might want the little girls might want to follow her footsteps. True. So right now, that crush from them six. And then the mother and the parents, the mother and the father, those parents are those six individuals don't have no decency to call up. Interview one of you all on the news and say, Mr. You know, Mr. Robinson, the Robinson family, we sorry about the loss of your daughter. Whatsoever. That's true. Their life is still moving along, you know, walking around here like they enjoy life. Man, like ain't nothing happening. My father right here struggling each and every day. You know, I cry every day. It's a struggle for me. And he's not lying about that. You know, um, as a parent of the other six, you would have thought that somebody would have came forward and did some type of news report. Well, my child, you know, went there to enjoy themselves. I'm sorry about what happened. Something, even if you didn't want to say anything about your child or whatever, um, they could have at least said that they're sorry for their loss or something. Nobody seemed to have cared. And the crazy part about this is Elise and a lot of them, they have family members that's in the police. They're police officers. They are in the army. And these are respected jobs, y'all, that's supposed to have some type of morals. You're supposed to be out here to help people. This is what you signed up for, to help people. And for nobody to come forward and say anything, everybody is just lockjawed. That just goes to show you that it's more to this than you think. It, and it's just like, uh, is it Nazir? I think it's Nazir. It's just like Nazir said. Um, Y'all don't even understand. It's more to this than what you think. Okay? When he said that, I'm telling y'all, it took me back to Mo3. And even right now, Mo3's case has, you know, just stalled. Because, you know, um, I personally, like, the powers that be. There's people that have places with money that helps cover up things when they want to cover it up. And it's a sad world that we live in that there's no justice for people that has money. When people got money, you don't get no justice when they didn't done something wrong. Unless you got some like iron, you know, um, it, it got to be airtight, you know, um, information to take them down. There's no way they can wiggle out of it. You know, have a recording. And not just a recording like Shanquilla had because that recording went off. And when that recording went off, Shanquilla was sitting there on the floor, sitting up. Um, she wasn't passed out or anything like that. So we don't know what happened after that went off. And it seemed like everything was done purposely. It's no way these kids could have put that together. There's no way Cabo Six could have put what they did to Shanquilla together and got away with it. They mastermind her demise they mastered it okay um that took some planning that took some people telling them what to do y'all to get away with this you know i told y'all about that show that used to come on how to get away with murder um it was a whole crew of wannabe lawyers or whatever growing you know they were studying to be lawyers or whatever and it, it was a whole crew of them okay and this is all that they talked about was murders and how to get away with it and how to, y'all, this is sad. And I'm when I say this is sad, I'm saying this as far as Shanquila. I feel sorry for Shanquila, not nobody else, because I'm so confused on this whole family. It's a lot that's just. And, and, and sometimes I look at the father and the mother and you kind of see like you see some guilt on their faces. And then you say, why would they have guilt on their face? But if you got a bell bracelet on, you know, this is a, you know, it's supposed to be some kind of the goddess of bell. You, this is somebody that they sacrifice kids to and this is type of bracelet that the father had on and i'm surprised nobody is not even bringing that up when he's having interviews i'm surprised nobody is saying anything about any of that you know what i'm saying y'all um i can only feel sorry for shankwila really I, I i i have no and i don't know why 
but it is what it is you know i'm not i'm not the type of person that sugarcoat stuff and try to lie be like oh i feel sorry for the mom and daddy and, 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 and i can't feel sorry for them because they're all over the place and they've been all over the place since this happened now it seems like they're turning on each other and I, it just feels like they i don't know y'all it just seems like some kind of guilt on the look on their face if you look at his face and then if you look at the mother face, how mean she looks all the time. It just seemed like it's some guilt in there. Okay? And I, I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all get from it, but that's what I get from it. Let's keep going. Mr. Rupp, have you had any contact with the Sims? No, not at whatsoever. Okay, you can barely hear the guy that's asking the questions, but he's asking him, have you had any kind of contact with any of, you know, Cabo Six or anybody else? And he said no. Now, you don't need me reaching out, you know. I'll let God do what he got to do. But I tell you this, they wouldn't, they're not going to get away. They're, they're not going to get away. What is your message to them that are watching? My message to them, yeah, you know, why can't y'all just go ahead and, and tell the truth? Why y'all up and left her? like that because if you would have stayed this father right here would have made sure y'all got back to the united states whatsoever any of her friends that she grew up with they would tell you that her dad took care of them when they was with san Quilla, just like they was mine from day one and i'm still the same father that she was that i raised her that i am is today and she gone you know I'm frustrated about it to the, to the utmost. I'm frustrated. I just can't understand why, you know, the autopsy that I got back saying that her neck and spinal cord was broke because when I talked to the young lady, Miss Elizabeth, who over there, she, um, I asked her before she even sent her body back to me. You know, um, I asked her, I said, Miss Elizabeth, well, you know, how my daughter die? She said, Mr. Robinson, your daughter's neck and spinal cord was broke. I said, you kidding. I just stopped crying. Because they're saying that the, the, the Mecklenburg County exam, the medical examiner is saying that they didn't even make visual confirmation of that. Well, I can't understand that. I don't know who the medical examiner who, autop who did autopsy on her body, but I would like to know how many years of experience that he have in doing an autopsy on a body or, you know, now they're saying that the person who did the uh, the first autopsy in Mexico don't know what the heck he was doing. But like I told y'all, those Cabo Six had help over there with this whole situation. And they knew that with all the different dis discrepancies that's going around, the different stories that's being told from everybody... Um, even the paperwork is being is all fully a lie. Now there was some of my subscribers that came in my comment section and they were like, you know, Miss Lowdown, what if the United States people is the ones that's lying and the Mexico people is the ones that um you know, um is telling the truth. Well I don't know that. I don't know. The whole thing is all over the place. I'm just gonna say that. And when you got about 20 people and you're getting different information from each one that that shows you that there's nothing going to be done as far as you know um judicial system there's nothing going to be done in this case not whatsoever okay um due to the fbi um closing the case can mexico ask them to send them back over there i don't think they can make them send them back over there because they're saying that they don't find anything and that's one thing about the united states you know they try to make sure that if somebody is going to get indicted or whatever in another country or something like that you know they got to have grounds for even to go along with it 
And for them to say that, you know, um, what they are seeing, it doesn't, you know, show what really happened to her on that footage. It just showed that, you know, she was a, a, abused. Okay. Um, she didn't want to fight. We saw that. But we also see the tape cut off. And from what they're saying of why she actually passed away, that's not what was on the film of what we saw. And like I told y'all before, we've been getting a lot of lies from day one. Okay, that is sad, but that is true. So we don't know who, where it's going to come from. And I think this is how genius they were when they did this. Because they took her over there. They got all these discrepancies coming from over there. Then they come back home. And now the autopsy report is not even showing the same thing to what we was being told. So they, they didn't get away with this scot-free as far as the judicial system. But when you do some dirt like this, you don't just walk away from it that easy. That's why I told you they all got a target on their back now. Okay? And this is going to eat them up. I don't care how dirty they are. They got to always know what they did to her. Okay? And that it's never going to go away until, you know, something happens. Don't be surprised when you start hearing about something that happened to some of the Cabo Six. I'm going to throw that out there, too. So for some reason, something just told me to throw that out there. Don't be surprised when you hear some freak accident didn't happen to the Cabo Six. Some of the members. Don't be surprised. Because um, that karma is something else. It is something else. And the way that they took her out, ain't no way they're going to get away with that. Ain't no way. Maybe through the law, as far as the law is concerned and FBI and all this stuff, maybe through that, yeah, y'all done got away with it. But you are, they're not, they're not going to get away with it. They have targets on their back. They can't even move around freely like they want to anymore. Everybody knows their face. And one thing I would say is keep their faces out there. Keep this story alive by keep posting their pictures up of who all she went on vacation with so that, you know, them them faces will stay fresh in everybody's minds. Because sooner or later, somebody's going to see them out on the street, and then they're going to tell a friend and a friend and a friend, and they're going to give up locations. People are going to be recording them when they see them out and, and, and let people know where they are. So um, this is not over. It's not over by a long shot. I'm telling y'all. Let's keep going. Where do you get his degree from? You know, because it's frustrating. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Because this lady Elizabeth, that's what she do. When people die over in Mexico, she go and get she get the body, um, do the paperwork and everything. And when's the last time you had communication like that? How often? And who was this Elizabeth lady, y'all? Did she get paid off? Ask yourself this question. Is that even her name? He just cause he talked to somebody over the phone and they told him a name. That could that even be that woman's name, y'all? I'm just saying. And I want y'all to think about something, okay? I want y'all to think about this. I don't want to keep going on and on. But I, I want y'all to think about the fact that... Um, ask yourself this question. If you were going to have a surgery done, would you rather somebody in the United States do it? Or would you rather go to Mexico and get it done? And I'm not talking about if money is an issue. I'm talking about if you got enough of money to pay for it done in the United States... Would you rather get a surgery done in the United States that you can afford, or would you rather go to Mexico? Okay? And think about it, okay? They are, they are not up to par like the United States as far as medicine and this and that and that and this. They are not. They are not. So that shows you right there. Everything that's probably over there going on over there not trying to put mexico down or anything but we are more advanced here when it comes to surgeries and all kind of stuff everything that we do um it's a half possibility that the people that did the and they said they did a partial autopsy they didn't even do a full autopsy so if you only did a partial autopsy, you didn't even do a full autopsy then. How would you know that her neck was broken? You Wouldn't you have to do x-rays or something for, to find out if a neck was broke? Y'all, I'm just saying. Um, I believe in my heart of hearts that them people got paid off over there. 
and um or they know somebody that knows somebody they know somebody okay and this was all planned I, I keep saying this i don't know why but i just feel like you know they did whatever they did to shanquila and then they passed her off to somebody else to finish the deed that's how i just feel i don't know who wanted to take shanquila out or why but um you know there are a lot of rumors going around i'm gonna say allegedly because i don't know you know, you can listen to the mother and father talk about how sweet Shanquila was and she didn't she did wouldn't do her the flash, she wouldn't this, she wouldn't that. Like she was just this angel. Um, but we don't really know. And you know, a lot of people get mad at me when I say it this, but you don't know what all Shanquila was into and was you know, around. Look at the people that she hung out with. Okay? She hung out with some dirty ass people, y'all. And I'm gonna tell y'all this: birds of a feather flock together. I don't care what you say. You you ain't you can't be so squeaky clean, but you hanging out with a bunch of monsters, okay? Um, you don't know what Shaquilla was into or what she was, you know, how she really was making her money. It's only so many heads you can braid to make money, okay? Um, they say she had, you know, clothing boutique. Yeah, she had that. They say she had, you know hair weave business online that she was making a lot of money from as well but how do you not uh, there's so many people that's making money right now it, even these rappers out here they're making money doing all these shows but at the same time they ban bricks on the side okay y'all so we don't know the whole circumstance when it comes to what all happened there's so many rumors that she had told on somebody some you know with the ppp loan stuff and I told y'all people went to prison behind that PPP loan scandal that went on down there. So if she had something to do with telling on that person, um, I told y'all the people that rent the villa, um, they're connected. They're connected. The lady who even, you know, rents the villas out, she's connected to the PPP scam. So y'all, it's, it's so much, so much stuff that, it's not being told and said to us. And I don't know why I feel like Cabo 6, you know, I feel like Dejanay, the possibility that she, you put the pause on her. But I also feel like somebody else could have finished the job. And I think that the reason why Cabo 6 is so quiet is because whoever this, you know, third party was, that possibly finished the job was it ain't no laughing matter it's somebody that's probably in a mob or something like that or you know something to do with that and they don't want no part in that they don't want to they ain't finna let the cat out the bag because this could put them in danger as a possibility but i do believe it's more to this story a lot more to it and um what we find out you never know you never ever know so i'm trying to close this out because this video long enough y'all Not so often, you know, she'll send me a text message, you know, how I'm doing and everything, but the case, everybody still is pulling for Shanquilla justice down there in Mexico, Cabo. I mean, you know, the contour is saying that Shanquilla didn't fit well in. Um, my main objective is this, if nothing didn't happen, why they just up and left? You came that Friday. So the concierge is saying that Shanquilla didn't even fit in with them. But we clearly saw Shanquilla kicking it when she got there. She was in a pool, um, in a birthday suit, y'all. She was kicking it when she got there. When the, even the people got there, she was like, where y'all bees at? She was live. She was still the life of the party while, you know, when they made it there. When they were getting ready to eat. You know, she was the one you heard talking about drink, drink, you know, for the party. You, you know, when they was going to play the games. So, for her, them to say she didn't fit in, um, I, I don't know. It just seemed like everybody is all over the place on purpose, y'all. I don't know. I think the concierge and everybody is in on this mess and just sending people off. Because what we saw in the video was Shanquila kicking it, y'all. We, we clearly saw her trying to kick it. Okay? And for them to be like, oh, she didn't fit in, I just don't get it. I don't get it, y'all. Something, it, I'm telling you, it's too many different stories. You're supposed to stay about a couple of days, but you're going to just up and leave that next day 
and get back on the plane and come back over here like it wasn't nothing, you're going to just leave over there? That don't even, that don't even sound right. Friends just don't do that. Nope. Friends don't do that. Is the plan still a rally in D.C. in May? I, I, well, I'm hearing from the information that I get from the news and, and people texting me. So uh, they keep me out of it. Can so I, they don't tell me, you know. Can I get you to talk? You mentioned the GoFundMe page a little bit earlier when you first started out talking. Yes. Do you want to, it, it sounded like you don't really have, you, you said you don't want to be involved with the GoFundMe page. Do you I never, I never did want to be involved in the GoFundMe from day one because there wasn't nobody arrested. I just want justice. Now, the GoFundMe page is, you know, it's sitting there. I mean, I guess they use it for the best ability of my daughter Case, our daughter Case, but still at the same time, this father right here, I'm going to let God do, do the work because it's, it's going to get done. God said you trust in him. He ain't going to fail you. He ain't going to forsake you. That's so true. That's how I'm going to stand, y'all. So all he's saying, he didn't even want anything to do with this GoFundMe, y'all. The daddy. So do he know that, you know, the mama and the sister is kind of scandalous, y'all? I'm just saying. He said he ain't want nothing to do with this mess. As far as to go find me. Continue to stand. I'm going to continue to stand on my faith. I'm going to continue to stand on my faith from day one since he left me. You know. Wow. So, y'all. It's a sad situation. It really is. It's really sad that, um. Through the judicial system, she is not going to get any justice because the case is all over the place. And this has happened. Is this happening a lot when it comes to these demons out here? They're figuring out a way to beat the system. And it's sad that they're doing that. You know, when you can chase somebody down on an expressway and all his enemies is out there recording and you arrest two people it claim you got two people for taking out mo three and then at the same time um there have been no charges put on them about mo three the charges that they have on them is for something else it just makes you wonder you know it's a lot of people that's covering up things out here y'all and they're getting away with a lot of mess that they're doing and it's sad you know i can't even get past the school with the kids that the police just sit in the hallway and let this man air out the whole classroom. And they didn't even think they're going there and stop him. They were, you know, these these kids, parents that were pol police officers that were in that school, when that school got hit up, they were busy going to get their kids out of the classrooms. And they wasn't caring about this man in here lighting up the whole room. They didn't care. You know, you can't have that many fatalities. You know, that whole police station should have been fired. Every last one of them. And they should not be able to go to work nowhere else as a police officer. McDonald's somewhere, but not no police officer. It's so much that's going on out here that people are letting people get away with doing stuff. And it's sad. And people are covering their tracks out here for stuff that they're doing. And it's sad, y'all. So, I don't know. But anyway, that's the new thing that just came out. You know, the daddy gave an interview, and he's pretty much calling the mama a liar. The sister and the mama is doing another interview saying they got to start all over. So I don't know what that means. Y'all start all over sending them some money again, I guess. I don't know. Um, they like, they more upset that they had to give, you know, um, Ben Crump some money. That's what they look like to me, and he ain't do nothing. Um, this whole thing is sad. And it's all said on Shanquilla's part because it seemed like, like she said, she don't have nobody. She seemed like she really didn't have nobody. And for her to say she have nobody and the daddy, you know, it seems like there was so much disconnect with this family. For your daughter to be posting stuff on her social media account saying that, you know, she don't have anybody. She's about to have things. It's okay to have Thanksgiving dinner alone. That sounds like somebody that's really sad and lonely. And a lot of people claim that she had a lot of friends. But why does she feel so alone, y'all? Even with her family, she felt like she was alone. She wasn't even really talking to the father like that. If she did, it was, you know, hit and miss. It wasn't 
you know, no serious mother, you know, father daughter conversation. She wasn't even telling him what she was mo going to, moving around. And she didn't, she didn't, she wasn't close to him like that. So it's the whole thing is say it, y'all. But anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thanks for watching. Peace.